student-run production by the National Broadcasting Society here at Bloomsburg University. I'm your host for this week, Jake McDonald. We'll start off the episode with the MBS News Desk to get an update of what's going on in the town and beyond. Good evening to you on this Tuesday night. I'm Deanna Jackson. And I'm Jay Kerr. Welcome to the News Desk. Just this past weekend, an apartment for the University of North Texas, a group of students came home to an unexpected surprise and a few unexpected guests. On the third floor of the apartment building, a party of over 100 people proved to be entirely too much weight for the floor when it came crashing down into the apartment below. This was not the first time this apartment had hosted a party of this size. In fact, the students in the apartment below were at the police department filing another noise complaint when the unfortunate event occurred. Many of the residents found themselves without a place to stay as the collapse in the floor caused broken pipes to flood the area and cause water damage. Fortunately enough, there were minor injuries reported of those who went down along with the apartment floor. This past Tuesday saw the first major elections during the Trump presidency, and the Democrats won big. States like Virginia and New Jersey had overwhelmingly big victories across the board. For Virginia's race for governor, it was evident that Republican Ed Gillespie was gaining ground on Democrat Ralph Northam. Democrats were certain they didn't have a chance until the voters said otherwise. Aside from the governor's race, transgender woman Danica Rowan was elected into the Virginia State House, becoming the first transgender lawmaker in the country. Her competitor, Bob Marshall, sponsored a transgender bathroom bill and even refused to debate Rowan, referring to her as male pronouns. Virginia also elected Democrats Hala Ayala and Elizabeth Guzman to become the first two Latina lawmakers in the country. Moving up north to New Jersey, Phil Murphy ousted Chris Christie for the governor title, and in Maine, voters overwhelmingly proved a ballot measure to expand Medicaid over the objections of their governor, Paul LePage, who vetoed the Medicaid expansion five times and counting. Philadelphia made contributions to the huge Democratic night by electing civil rights lawyer and Black Lives Matter defendant Larry Krasner to become district attorney. It will be interesting to see where we go from here, but for now, it seems to be a big step in the right direction for anyone who is looking for a change in our current political system. With the holiday season upon us and shopping to be done, we want to be careful when traveling around with large amounts of money. A stabbing occurred in the Mall of America Macy's Department Store dressing room just last night. The suspect approached the victim with his demands, but the victim, who has not yet been identified, fought back. A family member who was also stabbed when they heard the commotion going on inside the room and went in to help. The 20-year-old suspect, Mahad Abdirahman, was reported to have stabbed both of the victims while suffering minor injuries himself. The victims were rushed to Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis and are expected to recover from their wounds. And now we send it over to Danny with the weather. Thanks guys! Is anyone else enjoying this snow? Because it's getting me in the holiday mood and I cannot wait to eat some turkey next week. But don't worry, there won't be any more snow in the near future. Tomorrow will be a high of 49 degrees and a low of 36 with p.m. showers. Thursday and Friday will both have a high of 51 and a low of 37, with around 50% chance of rain throughout the day. Saturday will be a high of 50 and a low of 36, and that should be the last 50 degree weather for a while as we shoot down into the mid-40s over break. Well, that's it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving break filled with lots of friends, family, and food. Back to you guys. After our program, check out Hotspot and the Wrap-Up. I'm Jay Kerr. And I'm Deanna Jackson. Thank you for watching the News Desk. We hope you have a good night. Next, we'll get an update with what's going on in the world of sports with the wrap-up. Welcome to another episode of the wrap-up. I'm Deanna Jackson. This week, we've got an NFL update from Jake and Justin and an NBA segment featuring Jimmy and Breon. But first, we're going to go to Matt for some breaking news. On the afternoon of Tuesday, November 7th, the baseball world stood still for around an hour. A single-engine airplane registered to the former Toronto Blue Jays and Philadelphia Phillies star pitcher Roy Halladay was found at the Gulf of Mexico. For that hour, we held our breath in anticipation, hope, and for some prayer that Roy was not the one piloting the plane when it crashed. On that Tuesday, November 7th, Roy was confirmed dead at just the age of 40. 
After a sure Hall of Fame career including eight All-Star selections, two Cy Youngs in both leagues, and two no-hitters, including one in his first ever postseason appearance, Roy deserved to enjoy his retirement to the fullest. Unfortunately, a man who enjoyed every little thing the game of baseball